So let's say that I have this cool dashboard and I want to filter for Coca-Cola, for example, and all of the charts will filter to match that. So I'm going to show you how to make this in the video with this really cool interactive dashboard where you have things like card visuals and you have line charts and bar charts and pie charts and also these lines at the end called spark lines. I'm also going to show you how you need to decide whether to get charts directly from the data or via pivot tables and a whole bunch of other things like color coding it to match your logo. By the way, if you just want a copy of this workbook, then there is a link in the description of how you can get that. So let's get started. So here I have my data in a blank file and I'm just going to call this raw data. So I have certain column, city, singer, sponsor, prior sales, current year sales, date, country, females, males, notes, and month, which grabs the month and year from the date column using this formula. I'm not gonna go into detail about the formula because I've got quite a lot to cover in this video. So um, just to show you, if you want to make a chart of data, you can select two columns like this, and then you can go to insert and chart, and then it will pop up with a suggestion, but you can change it, for example, to a bar chart, and you have this awesome thing called aggregate, which means that you can add them together and just get one for each one. Really great, you can't do that in Excel without using pivot tables, so, so good that you can do that in Google Sheets. And uh, to do another thing, so for example, I want data over time, so I can choose dates like this, and it's best to do them with some blanks, that way your data can automatically grow. They just have to start and end at the same place. And you can choose first this one, that second this one, and go to insert and chart. And Google is smart enough often to know when you want to aggregate it. It's chosen a scatter chart, that's the suggested, but I'm going to choose a line chart, one like this, and I am going to aggregate it. That's how we get something that's a little bit more normal like that. And now we get our data over time. Now, if you wanted to aggregate it by month, you do need to have this month column or go through a pivot table. Uh, I can also select these two adjacent columns and I can go to insert chart and then it will recommend this column chart. But when it's two points, I like to do it sort of as a donut chart like this. I find that this looks quite clean. Another kind of visual that you can't do in Excel, which I really love, is you can go to sales and get a numerical thing and choose insert chart. And you have this really useful one right at the bottom called a scorecard chart. Always aggregate, and then you get a sum, and you can also add baseline by clicking that and choosing this one. Press OK, and it will show you in red what it is, and... If it's positive, it'll show you in green. You can change that from an absolute to a percentage as well in these options. And let's just say that suddenly I've gone up. So let's say that this becomes 40,000. Then suddenly it's green and it's showing me up like that, which is pretty cool. So these are a lot of kind of charts that you can create. But as I said before, the sorting option is a bit of an annoyance like this. But you can get around that using this thing called a pivot table. So if you go to insert and choose a pivot table, I'm gonna press create like this, and I can say I wanna see singer by sales, sales and values. I have another video where I talk more about pivot tables, and then I can say here sort by sum of sales, and I'm gonna sort descending, and I'm going to choose insert, select your data, not including the totals, insert chart and then you can have a sorted bar chart so that is something you kind of have to work around to make it work if you are going to use the aggregate feature so um to make a dashboard the idea is you put everything on one page and that's just the things on that one page so i'm going to click my charts hold down shift and click others and then we need to press Control c uh, and you can't cut, you can only paste. So if you do that, then it actually will keep the charts in the original place. So it's a bit annoying in Excel, it would allow you to just move them, but here you have to kind of keep them as they are and then move them here. So with a dashboard, always give it a title and then we're going to have some of these cards. Typically, your most important stuff goes at the top, and then your other stuff goes 
kind of a bit below that. And then you have your selection boxes on the right. We haven't yet built the selection boxes. That is coming, don't worry. I'm not going to build the exact one that I did last time, but I get fairly close. All right. So um, you can double click on items to customize them. Usually I find the axis titles are a bit pointless, so I tend to delete them. And I also don't like these grid lines. Now you can't delete them, but you can untake major grid lines. You want to get rid of this. Well, we'll do it here. There's no built-in way to delete these. It doesn't let you delete them. Uh, so if I want to remove that, what I tend to often do is I will add data labels like this. I'm going to do position inside base. So they're aligned like that. I don't need this and this is kind of pointless. But the only workaround that I know of is to make this wet. Uh, not ideal, but that's the way that I am doing it. So you go back here. What you can do is you can select your data and you can go to data and add a slicer. This is the interactivity bit. So you can say, choose the categorical field. So city is a good one. And then I'm going to do data and add a slicer. I'm going to choose singer and I'm going to choose data and add a slicer and sponsor and data add a slicer and month. I'm also going to do the wrong one and you're going to see what the problem with that is. So I'm going to do just sales. So anything that's a numerical figure, um, it doesn't really work. These kind of act as filters. So I can go here and I can filter for a city like that and it will only show me those in both the source data and in the charts and in associated with pivot tables. So if I was to choose a sales one, I mean, you would never really filter by this value, but that's kind of what you're doing here. You end up almost always with just one row of data, which is not really what you want. So uh, I'm going to select all and I'm going to delete this. because I've got the ones that I need or delete slice of that. So I'm going to shift click to select all of them and I'm going to copy it again like before you cannot cut and paste you can only copy them what I do like about Google is that it lets you uh well firstly resize them and then it has these things that kind of showed you when you're in line when you're doing things with even distribution and things like that so if I'm there then it's evenly distributed between the three of them Really great. Excel doesn't do that. It's in PowerPoint, but it hasn't moved to the realm of Excel. And I don't really know why, because it's kind of a no brainer for me. Uh, great. All right. So let's do a couple of other things. So here we have this chart and I'm going to copy it and paste it here. And then with these ones, going to see that it's not affecting that. Now, slices are finicky. If I go to the three dots and I choose edit slicer, we'll see that I've ticked the box that says apply to the pivot tables. Uh, there are some customizations that you can do here. For example, the font, some text colors and things like that. There isn't that much. Um, honestly, uh, they are quite clunky. They do error out a lot with certain instances. Even on making this video, I had to figure out why they errored out and re-record. Um, but essentially what you need to do is you need to first clear the slicer select all and then if you go to back to your raw data and you create a pivot table off this data then the slicer will work if you have the slicer in place before that so if i go to insert and pivot table now and you need to do this in a new worksheet otherwise it was giving me errors as well maybe these things will be fixed soon but at the moment this is why we're seeing so i'm going to say i want to see singer and i want to see females and males and i want to sort by females in a descending order. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to uh, cut, control X. I'm going to go here and I'm going to paste. And then, or let's do it down here. We don't need this one. So I'm going to delete that because it's got errors anyway. And then what I can do is if I filter, then it is going to actually affect the pivot table. As long as I keep that selected, that says apply to pivot table, which I can get to from edit slicer. 
There we go. So now it is working. And any chart of this will work as well. So if I select that and I go to uh, insert chart and here I have a totaling one. So I'm going to choose uh, this one. There we go. We don't need to aggregate because it's already aggregated. It actually won't really do anything. Um, and you can rename them here. So if you just want females and males, it'll rename it there and it'll follow through to that. If you want to edit this, you can just double click it and edit it. So I would want to say breakdown by singer. And same as before, delete the clutter you don't want or make it white if you need to. All right, and now just to show you this one, if I was to filter, change the slicer selection, this would affect the chart as well. These are sorted, which is good. You have to sort by females. So even if males is more, then it will help that much with the sorter. All right, so other things you can do with pivot tables. So you can actually copy and paste them. I actually find this feature really useful to make new ones. And in this one, I'm going to choose some other fields. So I'm going to go with date in rows and let's just go with males. That's fine. And what is useful to know is that you can right click on a date and choose create pivot table group and you can just choose the month or I like to often do the year month uh, because that way it will aggregate over multiple years. And here I can choose insert chart and I'm going to choose an area chart, but one of these kind of stacked ones, like step ones, I mean, and I find this one to be quite nice. You can also in customize, you have a bunch of options so you can include uh, trend lines, obviously data labels again, or you can include error bars. Um, I personally don't find there's that many options here. It's much more limited compared to Excel, but there is quite a lot that you can still do. Um, and there are some other visual types like the card that is really, really useful and the fact that you can aggregate. So there's definitely pros and cons between all of them. Show you another kind of visual, which is interesting, is you can select uh, columns. You could also do non-adjacent with control and you can do insert chart. And you actually have a visual called a table chart, which is interesting. Uh, you have control over things like pagination so you could say that someone can go to the next one, which is actually quite interesting because it means that you can get a lot more and you don't have to make sure that you have everything in view, which is quite nice. You also, of course, have aggregation, which essentially allows you to create a pivot table and the user can sort by whichever column they want. So it does become quite nice there. Uh, it is a little bit limited, but the pagination feature can be quite nice. So um, control C, it doesn't even show you on right click that you can do that and control V here to paste it. Now, if you are going to use uh, tables, regular tables, for example, pivot tables like this inside your dashboard, then I do recommend you add visual flare with conditional formatting and something else called sparkline. So I've cut and, and pasted it. And here we're going to now drag the date into columns we're going to add sales over here. And in rows, we're actually going to add singer like that. So this is our pivot table and it is quite detailed. I don't want a grand total. So I'm going to show, not show the total there. And now what I can do is I can select these numbers. I can go to format and conditional formatting. I love conditional formatting. If you're not already using it, highly recommend it. And you can do something like this, which shows you visually the highs to the lows. You can customize it further if you want to. If you want to get a trend line for each one, you can use a function called equals sparkline and data and options. I'm just going to do the data part. I do have another video that I did very recently on all of the options. So they are worth knowing about, but that's really nice. And you can drag that down and it can give you this line chart inside the cell, which is pretty nice. So. Um, if we want to get the format to copy, so I'm going to say chart or trend. Then what we can do is you can actually recolor things. So I can change the fill color using this thing called the eyedropper. I love the eyedropper. Pick a custom color, choose that. It exists in Google Sheets, but not Excel, unfortunately. 
and I'm going to choose the eyedropper here and just make sure that I get exactly the same so that it feels like it's continuous. Uh, this one is going to be white text though. Perfect. Great. So these are all related to the slicer. It does all kind of work. So if I was to change the sponsor to be just Coca-Cola, then these would change. It would give you this NA error. So I guess best to uh, wrap it inside an if error. Essentially, if there's only one value, then it does that. So if error uh, will do absolutely nothing if there's no error, but if there is an error, then you have a value if error, and I'm done speech box, speech box to replace it with a blank. Uh, and I'm going to control D to drag that down. And just to show you now, if I was to choose Coca-Cola again, it would just give me a blank. It wouldn't give me an error. So that's a little bit nicer than what we had before. For some final touches, obviously you do want to arrange it nicely. As I said, the most important on the top left, the least important on the bottom right. And you can also go to the view tab and in show, you don't want to see grid lines to make it much cleaner. And also in view, you can choose the formula bar. You don't need to see that. So it gives you a little bit more real estate to see what you're doing. And then if I go back to my other one, this is how it looked. So I have three cards. Uh, probably want to do some stuff to distribute them evenly, move them around and have this or everything's in line. The idea is you can see it all in one page without scrolling. And now if I select all, it works pretty nicely. So there is more that you can do with charts. Um, you can have and customize and series. You can have data labels, which is each one. You can also have total labels, which at the moment is just putting them outside here, which is useless for the top ones, but it can be a nice thing to do if you can see them all in those instances. <laughs> And then think about other things like what are the things that you really want to see? What are the top aspects in the top left? And then I would usually do my slices here and then my logo down here. Great. So that is a whistle stop tour of charts in Google Sheets as well as dashboards. I hope you enjoyed that. My name is David and I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tegla Workplace, I'm covering on my channel. So check out my other videos if you like this. Thanks for watching.